Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Admiral Tidd, um, you state that the southern border should be the last line of defense, not the first. Given the diminishing Navy presence dedicated to Southern Command, is the Coast Guard an increasingly valuable partner as a forward line of defense? Sir, you know, we also talk about there's a, a, a third border, and that's the maritime border and the, the, up through the Caribbean. And the Coast Guard right now is the principal uh, maritime, U.S. maritime force uh, that's present in the Caribbean. And I think they do a good job for you. Uh, your testimony states that Southcom lacks the forces necessary to interdict about 75 percent of identified and validated drug trafficking targets. A successful interdiction requires two things, an end game asset, a boat or a helicopter to stop the trafficker, and law enforcement authority to make the arrest. Does the Coast Guard's new national security cutter have these two attributes? Senator, they do. Uh, the national security cutters uh, are uh, a superb platform, uh, very capable, and uh, frankly, uh, their, their presence, uh, they, they also have the seakeeping abilities to operate in the, uh, in the eastern Pacific, uh, further offshore where the vast majority of the, uh, the trafficking is occurring today, and so they're very valuable platforms. The newest national security cutter recently seized 16 tons of cocaine worth $400 million. Um, in fact, the Coast Guard has reportedly seized about 100 metric tons of cocaine, about $3 billion worth since its first operational deployment. Do these um, national security cutters arguably pay for themselves in this regard? Senator, I, I would never turn down an additional national security cutter operating in the Southcom region. Um, one other thing, your, uh, your testimony um, states that Southern Command is dedicated to becoming a platform for experimentation and innovation, and this includes unmanned platforms and and advanced sensors. So tell us about that. Expand on on that testimony, if you will, sir. Senator, in our efforts to, uh, to find uh, new and innovative ways to get after the, the resourcing problem, uh, we, we have uh, aggressively discussed with services and with uh, uh, the research and development organizations that uh, we would be an ideal uh, region to come and test out new technologies, perhaps new technologies that are being developed for a different theater, for a different problem set, uh, but that uh, we have a, a meaningful operational mission, we can provide uh, real feedback, and that uh, my commitment as a combatant commander is to ensure that uh, we eliminate any bureaucratic uh, impediments to being able to bring them down and operate them, test them out for a period of time, and provide that feedback. Well, thank you very much, uh, Admiral, and I would like to invite you down to the Gulf Coast to the Stennis Space Center to see the cutting-edge research being done at the Naval Research Lab and uh, with regard uh, to um, unmanned underwater vehicles, and uh, also the Navy Meteorological and Oceanographic Command operating a large fleet of UUVs. Um, you might want to come down and visit us, and perhaps you could leverage these installations as you push for new innovations. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.